الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ونوله أما بعد As you all know brothers and sisters tonight is the night of the 29th and it is very possible that this night is the last night of Tarawih the last night of Ramadan and if not this night then tomorrow night will be for sure uh, the last night of Tarawih and so here we are having finished yet another Ramadan having been blessed with yet another Ramadan it was wallahi yesterday that I stood before you for the first khatira and the entire masjid was as packed as it is today. It was as if it was yesterday that we're wondering how we're going to cut through all of these 30 days, the summer months fasting. This is the difficult fast of July and August and we're wondering how it's going to finish. And here we are praying our final taraweeh of this year or the second to last taraweeh. And that is it, the month is all as if, as if it only came by literally one hour ago. And such is it with time and such is it with Ramadan. That this is how Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed us with a small window. As Allah says in the Quran, ayyaman ma'dudat. Just a limited number of days. Ayyaman ma'dudat. They're just a few limited number of days. And if you look at it, brothers and sisters, Wallahi, let us be honest here. One side of us, the physical side, we're kind of sort of looking forward to the, the month finishing. That okay, now we don't have to worry about the long days and the hectic iftars, rushing to the masjid, the uh, uh, fighting with the parking lot and this and that. One side of us, no doubt. But wallahi brothers and sisters, every one of us, there is also a side, and that is the more rational and the spiritual side. That is dreading the end of this month. Why? Because we will miss Ramadan. We will miss everything about Ramadan. We're gonna miss fasting for the sake of Allah. We're gonna miss feeling thirsty in the daytime, knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rewarding us. We're gonna miss giving up of our sleep. We're gonna miss the halawa of listening to the Quran. We're gonna miss the lagha of every day. Forget the iftar. Far more sweeter than that is the brotherhood of Islam, is the jam-packed masjids, is seeing your Muslim brothers and sisters from across the city. Brothers and sisters, we've been through plenty of Ramadans. After Ramadan, we developed the post-Ramadan blues. That's only we can say in Memphis. Nowhere else we can say this. The post-Ramadan blues. Right? Don't quote me on that, Sheikh, when you go back to Canada. Okay, you get me in trouble here. The Memphians know what I'm talking about here. What that means is, as you all know, we really miss the spirit of Ramadan. We miss everything about it. And what does that show us, brothers and sisters? It shows us that one of the main wisdoms of Ramadan is an often overlooked wisdom. One of the main benefits of Ramadan is something that is usually sidelined. Perhaps the main benefit, we already said Quran, we already said uh, fasting, we already said so many khutbas and dhurus we gave. But Ramadan reintroduces us to the religion of Islam. Full stop. Ramadan makes us feel what is the pleasure of being a Muslim. Ramadan allows us to taste what the Prophet himself called Halawat al Iman. Because you see, he said, Iman has a taste. That the person has tasted the ta'am of Iman. Ta'am, there's ta'am, there's a taste, there's, a, there's an after effect of Iman. How does it taste? The Prophet ﷺ said, it is halawatul Iman. There is a sweetness of Iman. And you know what brothers and sisters, every one of us sitting here today, I don't have to quiz or ask you because I know every one of us has tasted that sweetness. Every one of us has become addicted to the tilawa, the ukhuwa, the brotherhood, the masajid, the Quran, the dhikr, the dua, the ibadah. We are reintroduced to what does it mean to truly worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in that process, we rediscover over and over again a fundamental fact. And that is, there is nothing sweeter than worshiping Allah. There is no feeling on earth that can leave you as fulfilled and as happy and as productive as worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing on earth. Wallahi brothers and sisters, your bodies are tired, your throats are dry, your sleep has been deprived, but I could not pay
pay you a million dollars to feel how you feel right now, knowing you fasted every day of this month, knowing that you struggle, knowing that you've attended Tarawih, knowing that you have raised the bar, you feel like you've done something. Do you know why? Because you have done something that is truly the only productive thing you can do, and that is the worship of Allah. Everything that you do for the dunya, it comes and goes. Everything that I do and you do for this dunya, it's all gonna go. No matter what you do, how big of a house you build, no matter what you do for the dunya, deep down inside you know that this is not what it's really all about. But what you do for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, what you do for the sake of the Akhirah, that is what truly remains. That's the Darul Akhirah. That is Allah Azza wa Jal says that in the Darul Akhirah lahi al Hayawan. That the Hayawan here doesn't mean animal. Many know Arabs think Hayawan. Hayawan here means the ultimate Hayat. Darul Akhirah lahi al Hayawan. That is the real Hayat. Darul Akhirah. And whatever we do for that dar, for that hereafter, that is what makes us feel as if there is no other feeling on, in the world. And that is why brothers and sisters, one of the biggest benefits of Ramadan, perhaps the biggest wisdom, Ramadan has so many wisdoms, one of the biggest benefits is very simple. Allah Azza wa Jal facilitates for us, makes it easy, He gives us some sweets. What are those sweets? The sweetness of Islam, the sweetness of Iman, the sweetness of living like a Muslim. And when we feel that sweet, you know what happens when we go to a good restaurant or a fancy dessert, we love it. What happens? We want to go again. We tell our fans, friends and family, man, that dessert place, it's out of this world. We got to go there. Come on. Why? Because when you taste something sweet, you want it over and over and over again. And so Ramadan introduces us to the greatest of all pleasures. And that is the pleasure of having a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The pleasure of being a true servant of Allah azza wa jal. And there is no pleasure that is greater than this pleasure. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us in the Quran, that in worshipping Allah, we will find our ultimate pleasure and happiness. Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, or you who believe, istajeebu lillahi wa lirrasooli idha da'akum lima yuhyeekum. Respond, hearken, obey to the call of Allah and His Messenger whenever they call you to that which will give you your life back. This is what the Quran says. Istajibu, respond, stand up, listen to what? Lillahi wa Rasul. To anything Allah and His Messenger says. When they call you, what do they call you for? Lima yuhyikum. It will give you hayat. And that's exactly what Ramadan does. We feel alive again. Because this is the real life. It is the life of the soul. It is the life of the root. It is the life of the heart. And that is far more important than the life of the body. I already spoke about a few weeks ago that in Ramadan, we intentionally weaken the body. We secondize the body. We make it secondary. Why? Because when we push the body's uh, urgent needs aside, the spirit rises up. When we neglect the, 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 the body, the soul, takes over. And that is why Allah Azza wa Jal tells us that, look, don't take care of the body, I'll take care of it. Don't eat, don't drink, I'll take care of you. What does that allow us to do? The opportunity to concentrate on the soul. The soul feels more aware. Every one of us, our iman now, sadly it won't be the same two weeks from now. And this we all know. The iman that we feel right here and now, it's not going to be the same two weeks, one month from now. This is the reality. We feel alive. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, that this Quran contains in it your ruh. وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكُمْ Allah Azza wa Jalla says it is a nur, it is a ruh. وَكَذَلِكَ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ رُوحًا مِنْ أَمْرِنَا The Quran is called your ruh. Why? Because when you follow the Quran, what happens? You become alive again. The Quran is called your nur. I've already talked about the motifs. The first khatira I gave, when we talked about Surah Baqarah, we mentioned the motif of light. That Allah Azza wa Jal describes the Quran and Islam and Hidayah as being light. And all of this goes back to here. That light and life is what we need to live. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he as well felt the halawa in worshipping Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He as well knew what it meant to worship Allah. And that is why when a problem happened to him, what did he used to do? Aisha tells us, كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِذَا فَزِعَهُ أَمْرُ If something gave him problems, what would he do? Before I finish the hadith, let me ask me and you, when you have a bad day at work, when you have an argument with your wife, when you have a problem with your kids, how do you relax yourself? Let's be honest here. 
Most of us, we turn that shaitan on that is called the waster of time. This is one of the biggest ways we relaxed ourselves. Or we might surf the net to check Facebook status or whatnot. We think this will calm us down. Aisha says, كَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ إِذَا فَزِعَهُ أمر. If something caused him any problems, what would he do? Immediately, he would rush to the salah. Immediately, he would rush to the salah. Why? Because he realized re-establishing that connection with Allah, that is what will calm you down. That is what will bring about peace. And that is why when it was time for the salah, and Bilal would be a little bit late, he would say, Bilal, where are you? أَرِحْنَا بِهَا يَا Bilal." We want the ra'iha, we want the, the, the pleasure of salah. Arihna biha, give us the sweetness of that relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal. This Ramadan, many of us brothers and sisters, the sad fact of the matter, we are not as good Muslims as we should be. And in Ramadan, we raise the bar, every one of us. This is one of the blessings of Allah. Wallahi, anybody who has an atom's weight of iman, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, in Ramadan, they raise the bar. If they're not praying, they began to pray. If they're not praying sunnah, they pray sunnah. If they're praying sunnah, they start praying tahajjud. If they read Quran one page a day, they start reading ten pages a day. This is the sunnah of Allah. So brothers and sisters, every one of us, we have raised the bar this month. And when we've raised the bar, what have we discovered? Raising the bar is not that difficult. In fact, the rewards, the pleasure, the ladha is really worth it. Now that Ramadan is over, what are we going to do after this? Are we going to now go back to where we all began? Are we going to go back to our previous lifestyles? If that is the case, then the fact of the matter is, Ramadan has not truly benefited us. Allah gave us the desserts, but apparently we didn't taste that sweetness. Because we're not interested in tasting it again and again and again. One of the signs of an accepted good deed, as our scholars of the past say, one of the signs of Allah having accepted your deed, is that you are better after the deed than before it. You go for hajj, you better come back changed, or else your hajj is useless. That's the reality of what Islam teaches us, the Quran teaches us, the Sunnah teaches us. That when you've had a momentous blessing of Allah Azza wa Jal, it should show in your daily life. And that is why the scholars say, for example, those who go for hajj and come back the same, it's as if hajj didn't do any impact upon them. The same goes for any blessing, and Ramadan is one such blessing. We've been blessed with another Ramadan. We've been blessed with another Ramadan. Allah knows how many more Ramadans we're going to have, brothers and sisters. Every one of us knows people that were not here last Ramadan. Every one of us. Every one of us knows people that were not here last Ramadan. And here we are. And a time will come when people will be remembering us as well. Oh, yeah, fulan, so and so, he used to be amongst us. And we're not going to be there. Allah knows when is our last Ramadan. The point of Ramadan, I've said this many times, we raise up, we rise up, maybe a hundred, maybe a thousand. Ramadan finishes. Nobody can maintain that. That's too much. But don't go falling and crashing back down to where you began Ramadan. No. All of us are going to be a little bit, yes, we cannot maintain this. We cannot. But when we go down, if we've raised up a hundred levels, okay, go down 30, 40, 50. Don't come crashing back down to a hundred. If we raised ourselves a thousand steps, okay, go down 300, 400, but raise the bar so that every time Ramadan comes, we find ourselves better Muslims at the end of the month than before the month. Anyone who was not praying five times a day, brothers and sisters, for how long? I mean, come on, for how long? For how long are we going to delude ourselves? The bare minimal requirement of being just a bare practicing Muslim is the five daily salawat. Let us make this our habit from today that khalas Ramadan has taught me that being a Muslim is beautiful. Being a Muslim is something that I can enjoy. It's something that makes me feel alive. So from today, no more excuses. Five daily salawat. Those of us who were not reading the Quran in Ramadan, we read a little bit. Okay, khalas, you cannot read a juz a day, a page a day, two pages a day, half a page a day, have some daily relationship with the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. This is your breakfast, brothers and sisters. Your real breakfast is reading the Quran. If you don't have your breakfast, you can't function. If you don't read the Quran every day, your soul is not going to have its food. Have some breakfast, something to do with the Quran. We all gave extra charity. Okay, we cannot give 5, 10, 20 thousand dollars every month of the year, but still have some regular recurring charity. Sponsor an orphan. 
$40 a month. Come on, what more do you want? One of the greatest blessings. Right now, go and say, every month I'm going to take care of an orphan. Every Friday, $5 for the masjid. Every something, I'm going to sadaqah for my mother and father. Have something regular. Our Prophet wasallam said, أَحَبُّ الْأَعْمَالِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَدْوَمُهَا وَإِنْ قَلْ The most beloved of all deeds in the eyes of Allah are those that are the most consistent, regular, even if it is something small. A dollar a day, a dollar a week, five dollars a week, a page a day, something that is consistent. Ramadan has taught us consistency. Every day fasting, every day taraweeh, every day Quran. Subhanallah, brothers and sisters, before Ramadan, Wallahi, I and you, every one of us, how can I fast, man? 16 hours, 17 hours, no food, no drink. The day before Ramadan, you're drinking all day because it's more than 100 degrees outside here, right? How am I going to do it? And now, it's as if it's not even an issue. It's not even a problem, we're completely used to it. And yet, shaitan will come to us the day of Eid, brothers and sisters. The day of Eid. The time of Maghrib will come and go, and nobody will even remember about it. Whereas before this, to the millisecond, huh, what's your watch time? Is it 51 or 52? 51 now, watch Allah, Bismillah, let's break it, right? We have memorized the daily salawat in our watches, right? The day of Eid, what happens? We forget? We don't even know what time is Maghrib? What time is Maghrib? I forgot, what is it? It's completely lost. And the next day after that, we've been fasting 30 solid days. And after that, it's as if we don't even know what the word fasting means until the next Ramadan comes. How some relationship, my reminder to myself and all of you, once a week, once a month, three times a month, some bare minimum to do something regular, right? We prayed an hour and a half, an hour, 15 minutes of taraweeh. Okay, we're not going to do this every single night. Maybe 10 minutes extra when you go home after Isha, just pray something extra. Just have some relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal. And then next Ramadan, raise the bar, then raise the bar, then raise the bar, until one day we will meet Allah Azza wa Jal. And every year will be better than the previous one. What a beautiful track record. What a beautiful track record. We will show Allah Azza wa Jal, Oh Allah, every year you gave me, I was a better person. I was looking forward to meeting you. Here, هَاُ مُقْرَأُ كِتَابِيَ This is my book, come and read it. This is the attitude of the Muslim, to be positive, to be energetic, to be optimistic. Brothers and sisters, the real halawa is the halawa of Iman. Al-Hasan al-Basri, rahimahullah ta'ala, that famous ascetic and state. Al-Hasan al-Basri said, you seek pleasure, you seek happiness, you will only find it in one of three things. And if you don't find it in three things, then know that the door to happiness has been shut for you, you're not going to find it anywhere else. Number one, salah. Number two, Qira'at al-Qur'an. And number three, Dhikrullah Azza wa Jal. This is where you find happiness. Salah, Qur'an, and Dhikr. If you're not going to find happiness in these three things, you're not going to find it anywhere else. Another famous scholar of the past, he said, if the princes and the playboys, if they knew how much pleasure I have in my, and we have in our hearts. Those playboys who are messing around thinking they're enjoying the world. The princes, the, the millionaires, if they knew how we felt of happiness, Wallahi, they would kill us with swords to get this happiness out of our hearts. And this is the reality, brothers and sisters, that every one of us in Ramadan experiences ourselves. I already asked you and I'll ask you again, could a million dollars make you feel as productive as you feel after fasting Ramadan? Could a million dollars make you feel as if you've done something worthy? You feel proud? You feel, yes, alhamdulillah, great, I've done it. That feeling of fulfillment, it only comes when you have a relationship with Allah. Brothers and sisters, the month is over, but the Lord is the same. The time is finished, but our lives, still we have some time. Ramadan is over, but Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed us with more life. And we pray for many years Allah Azza wa Jal blesses, but eventually that must come to an end. Every one of us will come to an end. So let us pray that this Ramadan will be the first of many Ramadans where we raise the bar every single month. Let us pray that insha'Allah ta'ala, this Ramadan, we're going to show ourselves, and we're going to show Allah, and we're allowed to show Allah, Say, do your deeds, because Allah will see your deeds. And we're allowed to show our deeds to the Prophet In other words, we are allowed to have the niyyah. I want the Prophet to look at my deeds. 
that the Prophet ﷺ as well is going to be proud of the deeds of his ummah. We're allowed to do this, to boast in front of Allah and in front of the people. That Allah, I did this for you. Or Allah, I did this for you. So let every one of us make an intention that insha'Allah ta'ala, this Ramadan, I will show myself, I will show Allah Azza wa Jal, I will be a better Muslim. Whatever deficiencies I have, I'm going to raise the bar. I'm not going to be perfect, I'm not going to be an angel. But I will be better than I was before the month began. That is the criterion. I will be better than I was before the month began. And every Ramadan that will happen, inshallah, I will continue to be better until I meet Allah Azza wa Jal. Brothers and sisters, prayer, salah, dhikr, Quran, recitation of, of Allah Azza wa Jal's commandments, being with the Muslims, the brotherhood, the ukhurwa, realizing we are an ummah. Me and, me and you, we both know, we go to work, we're the only Muslim there. You feel lonely, you feel cut off. And when you're with the community, you feel alive. Every single day, 500 Muslims gathering to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. It's all gone now. Khalas, that's it. That's not going to remain. But why should your attachment to the masjid have to be cut off? Why should it be, brothers and sisters, allow me to be blunt, that the masjid is so packed, people are standing, parking lots have a problem, and come Eid, and the day after Eid, we have two sufuf here. Why? You're all living in the same city. You're all close to the masjid. Why should it be that the tilawah is being heard every day? As soon as Ramadan is over, the Qur'an begins to gather dust until the next Ramadan. What type of attitude is this? When Allah has gifted us a Ramadan and allowed us to taste Iman, let us continue that taste. Every day, every week, every month. Look at every door of good, whether it be ibadah, whether it be qira'ah, whether it be dhikr, whether it be sadaqah. And every one of us say, inshallah, a little bit more. Not to the extent of Ramadan, we can't do that. But just a little bit more, whatever Allah Azza wa Jal has allowed me to do. And when you make the intention and make the step, Allah Azza wa will make it easy as the Prophet said that Allah Azza wa Jal says whoever walks towards me one step I walk towards him ten whoever comes to me walking I come to him running this is the beauty of Allah Azza wa Jal this is the majesty of Allah you show the intention and you try whatever you can and Allah Azza wa Jal will bless us with the rest may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Make this Ramadan an accepted Ramadan from all of us. May Allah Azza wa Jal accept all of our fasting. May Allah Azza wa Jal accept all of our Qiyam. May Allah Azza wa Jal accept all of our recitation of the Quran. May Allah Azza wa Jal free each and every one of us to the very last man, woman and child sitting here. May Allah Azza wa Jal free every one of us from his punishment and anger and the fire of hell. And may Allah Azza wa Jal place us amongst the victorious, the Faizin on this blessed night. Wa akhiru da'wan and alhamdulillahi. رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله